the product that is made from a bakery. And of course, it is produced from flour that is moistened, kneaded, proofed, and of course, with the addition of yeasts. Being a stable food for most Nigerians, which of course comes next after rice, makes the bakery business an ideal and of course, a lucrative business idea for investors. Hello and welcome to SME Hub. My name is Joshua Carter. Nigeria's bakery industry has seen rapid expansion in recent years, driven by population growth, evolving consumer preferences and improving economic conditions. Bakers are innovating to meet surging demand while leveraging automation to boost productivity. For entrepreneurs, this high-growth industry offers immense prospect to establish profitable bakeries, serving Nigeria's 223 million consumers. This article provides a comprehensive analysis of the prospect, strategies and factors critical for success in Nigeria's flourishing bakery sector. Bakery items, particularly bread, are dietary staples in Nigeria, owing to their affordability and accessibility. Now, key bakery products bread, wide range, white, whole wheat, veggies, sweet bread, buns, mass market brands like Butterfield dominate. Pastries, both local pastries like meat, fish pies and western styles that is donuts, cinnamon rolls and croissant. Cakes, demands are surging for customized cakes for birthdays, weddings, local and foreign bakeries compete here. Biscuit, mainstream brands like Royal, Romix and UTC have national distribution, regional players target local taste. Ching Ching, this popular indigenous crips snack seeks high demand and cottage industry production. Meat pies, affordable pies stuffed with meat, potatoes and spices are hugely popular made by neighborhood bakeries. Donuts, rings and ball donuts are gaining appeal across consumer segments, attracting bakery investment. Bakery products account for about 20% of Nigeria's processed food industry, employing thousands. However, most operations remain informal, providing opportunities for modernization and growth. Glad to have you back. So speaking of the bakery business in Nigeria, did you know that it's probably one of the oldest cooking methods, if not the oldest cooking method, with products like bread, cookies, pastries, and of course rolls, and so much more. Today on SME Hub, we'll be delving into the bakery business to find out the economic activities of such business vis-a-vis -vis the ease of doing business in Nigeria, and of course, the profitability of such venture. Yes, you heard me right. Today, I'm being joined by a business owner who runs a bakery business in Nigeria, of course, Lagos precisely. And of course, she is by name Folashade Dosumo. She is the CEO and as she calls it, mm, delicious bakery and cafe. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me here today. All right. So how long have you been in this business? And of course, what was it like? Because I know that for people who are delving into business for the first time, there are so much fears and, of course, challenges that they, you know, emphasize they would be able to face with. But then, what exactly is it for you in terms of how long have you been in the business and what was the challenge like when you started out? Okay, so I've been in the business, well, when it comes to baking and yeah. cooking for a while, for quite some time. Um, I started some time, well, basically during my secondary school, I was doing as a side of school, baking mm. and all, but I actually went official yeah. in 2020. So that was when I registered the business and all of that. And I was, my church at that period was giving grants. So I was able to get a grant from the church, which is what I used to start. At least I bought my, although when I, when I first started, that was 2020, I didn't have capital, so, but I had a freezer, which I wasn't using. So I sold that. I think I sold it for about 20 k or there, but I can't remember. So that was what I used to buy my, my pans, to make my pans, buy a few ingredients and all of that. You know? So after the grant, I was able to increase my stock and basically I started officially. And so I opened an Instagram account, which was so 
for the first two years, it was majorly Instagram. So I was doing a lot of in, in, in Instagram sponsored ads, which was um, the medium through which I was getting more of my customers and all that. So yeah, so that was how I started. All right, so um, when you talk about brands, because that in itself is yeah. something that catches the attention of every startup. Mm. What, what, what What's the value, okay. realistically, in terms of the grant, what was the value? Okay, it was 200,000. Okay, yeah, 200, but we weren't giving, I was giving like half of it, then later the remaining. Okay, so you started officially in 2020? Yes. So that's like three years down the line? Yes. All right, so how's the journey been so far? It has been interesting, of course challenging, but yeah. it has been interesting because majorly because of uh, the niche in which I am I'm operating in. So I'm into the healthy cakes and bakes majorly. Do I do the irregular white flour stuff like that? But I realized when I was coming back into the business, I didn't want to be the because you know the market is saturated with a lot of bakers and also I wanted something different and I actually wanted to meet a need. Hmm. You know, so I did my research on the health sector and realized that okay, we don't really have much of the cakes and bakes that are healthy. You know, for people who are health conscious, who mm. have, you know, just they just want to eat healthy and all of that. So I, I dived into it and it has been really rewarding because there are people who I, I meet who are like, I don't eat salt, I don't want sugar, I don't want milk, I don't want, you know, they are gluten free, they want gluten free. So it's, it's a lot. And I'm happy to be able to meet that need. The fact that, okay, I can make a cake for you and without sugar, without the milk, you understand? So diet specific cakes and bakes. So yeah, it has been rewarding, of course, challenging every business, especially in Nigeria. But yes, it has been rewarding. So, All right, so you talked about the fact that you have a niche. So what are those products that mm. you produce from your bakery yeah. to meet people or persons in that particular category? Okay, so we make um, cake breads. So <clears throat> it's cake bread because we make it like in the form of cake. Yeah. But it's um, it's bread because <clears throat> excuse me, you can eat it with eggs or you know spread like butter, jam, and all. You know, and we also don't use yeast. We use um, other raising agents such as baking powder, baking soda. Yeah. So we make cake breads. We make cookies. We make pastries. Yeah. So make those are the major <clears throat> items. All right. So. Um, where do you source the materials, the mm. raw materials from? Are they locally sourced or yeah. are, you know sourced overseas? Well, the majority of it is locally sourced. For example, oats, you get oats here, okay. um, baking powder and all of that. But the ingredients that are really uh, specific, like the sweeteners, because we don't use sugar, mm. so we use the powdered sweeteners. Those ones are, of course, locally, but we, I get them from the supermarkets. Okay. You know, they sell it in supermarkets. So we use onions, we use sweet powdered sweeteners. Then also we use fruits as well. Our nuts are from here. We get nuts from here. So it's a mixture, but majorly of the, most of it is sourced from, from okay, Nigeria. So what's the, 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 the cost of these things like in terms of sourcing these materials, the ones you source locally? Okay. What, what, what's the cost like and where exactly do you source in terms of local and um, geographical placement? Yeah, so most of them are quite expensive. For example, getting the nuts, like almond nuts, which we use, cashew nuts. Okay. They are quite, they are on their, especially almonds on the eye side. Then the sweeteners as well, because they are foreign, you understand? So getting it from here also expensive. So that also impacts on the prices of our of our products here. Yeah. But in terms of oats, we know oats. Oats are quite at least reasonable anyways because I buy my oats in the bag yeah. and all of that. So the oats here, yeah. but the other ones that are quite expensive are the sweeteners and the nuts okay. and the seeds. Yeah. So when it comes to the point where you need to decide on the pricing of your products, yes. what, what, what influences it? Oh, definitely the price of the uh, of the ingredients. Majorly the price of the ingredients. Yeah, then, um, yeah, majorly the price of the ingredients. Okay, so now let's get down to Naira and Kobo. As <laughs> okay. Right, so, um, uh, can you say boldly that mm. since you started this business in 2020, you know, fast forward to this time, mm. can you say boldly that you have been able to realize your ROI from the business or are you yet to get I'm that? yet to, unless I'm in the middle of it, yeah, I'm okay. yet to. Because uh, because of the prices of the goods, they're not um, items that the regular Jew will buy okay. because of the price. For example, the minimum um, um, per price okay. for my kick loaf is starts from like two, five, three thousand. Okay. You understand? And so you tell a regular Jew, oh, the person, ah, just for bread, <laughs> you know? Because they don't understand. Do you understand? So busy is the I I look at my 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 target audience are people who can really afford and who know the value of what they are getting. So yes. 
Okay, so you talked about the fact that um, social media has really been of help to you, yeah. especially when you started out, you really cashed in on it. And mm. um, share with us the experience, especially the impact it has had on your business. Okay, so um, now what I noticed about social media, although I know there are a lot of uh, coaches on social media trying mm. to help you, teach you how to get sales and Instagram and all that, but what I did majorly was um, sponsored ads. Okay. You understand? And I found out that whenever I do sponsored ads, my sales increase, increases, mm. you understand? So I leveraged on that every month. I just budgeted an amount for, you know, for sponsored ad and all of that. So that increased my customer base. Of course, it increased publicity, not as or visibility. Mm. Let's put it that way, because mm. now I get people who just see me on Instagram and they just, you know, chat me up or call me. Oh, I saw you and you understand. So it has helped with visibility, okay. you understand, and sales as well. Okay, so um, let's go down deeper into the issue of um, your sales. Okay. All right, now um, you've talked about the impact it has had on your business, positive one though. Now let's look at um, the profit aspect of it. Mm. You know, um, what, what, what would you say has been the profit like for you mm. in terms of your sales on a weekly slash monthly? Okay, so it varies in terms of sales. Okay. You know, some weeks we have a lot of you know more sales than others. Mm. But on the average, I would say, uh, let's say between thirty, maybe thirty to forty k in a week. Okay. You understand? On the average, or maybe let's say twenty five to thirty. Don't let me ex right, ex exaggerate. Yeah, so okay. twenty five to thirty on, on the weekly average basis. weekly. So yes. what's your profit margin like? Um, let's say about 10 percent yeah 10 to 15 percent okay so when yeah. you talk about these sales that rises between 30 to 40k yes um is it largely dependent on b2b and when i mean b2b yeah, business, yeah, business, 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 business or business to customer business to customer yeah. more business, more business customer. to customer yeah, yeah i haven't started business to business yet which i intend to okay and i hope to but at the moment it's business to customer b2c so, so how's the experience been like business to customer well, it has been good because, um, although challenging as well, For because sure challenges too. Okay, so like you know, when you make something and maybe customer, for example, delivery, the person gets it late and all of that. And I've had a customer where uh, about an incident where the customer said she wasn't taking it again because the dispatch rider got there late. Hmm. So I had to literally beg and call. As I spoke, the guy had to prove because he explained to me what the challenge was and all that. So I told, okay, please put it on this uh, conference call okay. and all of that. Okay. So he did that so that she could hear okay. our conversation okay. exactly. So it was, we were literally begging her because there was nothing, because I think it was on the mainland. So yeah. there was, he couldn't bring it back. And he didn't want to take it home. There was no, you understand? So mm -hmm. we had to literally beg her all along until she finally agreed. So that was that is one of the challenges because if the customer, you know, refuses because of late it delivery, you know, it's a loss on our part. Another thing, sometimes the customers are not at home and the dispatch rider is waiting and waiting and waiting. That's another challenge, you understand? Then also, transportation, uh, the delivery itself, the cost of delivery mm. with increasing fuel price now, yeah. you understand? For example, last week we delivered to a lady at um, Suulele, and it was, I think the cost, delivering from here to Suulele was coming to about four, five, five thousand. I couldn't tell the customer that, you know, because I know that would discourage her completely. Yes, yes. So, I, so what, what I, another thing I try to do is Good. look for alternatives. Now, my church is at um, Jack on Day, okay. you understand? So what I do is, okay, we can schedule this delivery, you understand, on days where we can deliver from another location yes. that will reduce your delivery cost. Hmm. So that was what we did. So on Thursday, it's, it's, she wanted it on Wednesday, so we yeah. moved it to Thursday. And yeah. so on Thursday, we baked it, then I took it along with me to church, and so we got the dispatch to deliver it from. So at the end, she paid like three, three, five. That means it reduced, it reduced so, <laughs> the cost. So in other words, you shifted ground. So yes. To meet that meet, yeah. Because obviously for entrepreneurs like you, mm. every opportunity counts. So yeah, we, it we, does. Don't, we don't turn off any opportunity mm. because the person cannot afford, cannot afford to it. Pay. Yes. So now let's look at the areas where it is within your means to mm. work on, especially with regards to timing. Yes. You cannot do anything when it comes to a dispatcher heading to a customer's house, getting mm. there, the customer is not around. There's nothing you can do actually. Yes. But in areas where you need to have um, a synergy with mm. your dispatcher, especially with regards to time, time yeah. how do you, how, how have you been to you know, deal okay, with Okay, so that? usually we are up early, you understand? And so we would have, we would have booked the dispatch the day before. What's your order time? 
Um, when you say order time, when, like, uh, what, when do you want them to place your, you know, their orders? Okay, so now the most um, orders should come in if for next day delivery, mm. orders should come in latest 5 pm. That's like today, if you want it tomorrow, mm. latest 5 pm. So if you're ordering like today in the morning, at least before 10 am or latest 10 am. So you your order do, should have come. You, you don't do, you know, extra service? No, not at the moment. Because, um, especially, especially the distance, you know, because I'm the baking process, you understand? So if you want the same day, mm. book as early as 10 a.m., you understand? So that we can deliver it to you on the same day. But as an entrepreneur, don't you need, you need to cash into that? Especially with regards to express service, which of course would mm. make you want to increase in your workforce. Definitely working on that. It's we are we are, we are looking into that. So what what's your um, your area of focus when it comes to recruitment, especially to increase your workforce? Okay, so def bakers, I'll need more bakers. You understand because at the moment we are just two, like in terms of bakers. So but I'll, I'll increase so that bakers and also I'm open to have a, a, like so like close a deal with a dispatch right company. Yeah. You understand so that. At, you can always come communicate and contact them anytime you need them urgently and all so yeah one of that then delivery guys as well so that because sometimes when the dispatch riders are not available mm. i can always send someone to go deliver you understand using public transport yeah so that's um, one of those are the areas we are trying okay. to use. all right so so far every business has got its bad side yes so what has been the regrets that you recorded ever since you've entered into this business Mm. Okay, one of such is uh, when I, <laughs> I um, okay, so because it's healthy uh, bakes, mm. some customers have specific, um, you know, specifications basically. Mm. For example, I don't want honey use sweetener. You understand? So there was this particular lady who ordered, and I did not take down a, a specification. Mm. You understand? So no, rather. At orchard, at, at, we had baked for her in the past. Mm. So now she was ordering another thing, mm. but I forgot that she had specified in the past that she didn't want honey, mm. or she didn't want honey. You understand? So that particular product, I used honey instead of sweetener. You understand? And so she called. Of course, after we had delivered and all of that, I think the person she was ordering it for someone, the person ate it, and began to react because wow. the person was diabetic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in fact, it was so serious. She called me. I was begging and begging hmm. because she expected me to know because she had ordered before. But because I did not take down notes in the past, you understand? Because the idea I should have gone back to make reference to hmm. that customer since yeah. she's, you know, she's yeah. an old customer, but I didn't. You know, so as in it was just God that helped me that the man recovered, you understand? But I lost that customer wow. because of that. Lo I lost lo that losing customer. a customer sometimes <laughs> takes double the effort to get them back. In fact, you so, know, I tried, I tried, but you know, I kept on sending messages, apologies, but she never responded to my chat again. So, you know, but since then, <laughs> I made sure that I take down every, even if you're an old customer, I take down your order, I write down your spare, I make sure I ask you all the necessary questions and I make reference to that. You understand? So even if someone else is baking, oh yeah, well, this is the notes. <laughs> follow instructions yes yeah, so all right so now as we wrap up the show um somebody's watching you right now i need okay. to go into this business mm. but of course the worry is i don't want to tie my business my money yeah on a particular business for too long so mm. when am i expecting my ROI? well in order not to be overly optimistic mm. i would advise uh six years give and take Yes, within six years you should have recouped. Given because the economic situation, situation in exactly. I think yeah, give and take six six years you should have. Because once you you have the right customer base, you have the right publicity in place, you understand, and you are you know making sales, you will recover. You understand? Because with the business, you don't exactly necessarily need electricity. You understand? Really? No, you don't. So once how do you do your so basically. Electricity is only needed when we are grinding our flowers, mm. the, the nuts, mm. you understand, making our butters and all of that. But other than that, when it comes to the baking process, mm. we don't need light, mm. you understand. So at least the cost of fuel is completely like almost eliminated. Exactly, you understand. So your focus is gas. Those are your focus, gas and of course delivery, transportation. Yes. All right. So say something to the camera as you get <laughs> someone 
who is watching you right now mm. and needs to go into this business? Um, first of all, I'll say you must be passionate about it. You must be passionate. You understand? It must be something you love doing. You understand? And also, um, be pay attention to detail. It is very important. You must pay attention, especially when you are measuring your ingredients. You must pay attention to detail. But once it's something you are passionate about, then also learn. You know, learn because with knowledge, you can adjust your recipes, you can improve on it, you understand? So you must learn, you must be versatile in your knowledge, you know, learn about baking, baking 101, everything, learn, just be open-minded and learn, just grab knowledge, <laughs> left, right and center here. Yeah, so that will be, so have your passion, then also have a source of income, you understand? So while you're building the business, you're also, you're not spending from the business money because there's always a tendency to spend and to reduce your, it will affect your capital. So, those are my advices, yes. Quite excellent, <laughs> isn't it? Anyway, so um, what are you preparing for us to do? I'm making oat flour cake bread. Mm, you had it right. Oat flour cake bread. Wow. So what and, it, and a little um, flourless chocolate loaf, but majorly um, I'll be focusing on the oat flour. Cake so bread. much for you guys, <laughs> isn't it? All right, so that's, you know, get on walk us through okay. the process, isn't it? Yes, right, come along. <laughs> Free bacon. You just mix it just till you are able to get in all the flour, but you don't have to mix it too much. Understand? Now, just bear in mind that you don't rise as much because it's gluten free. You know, gluten helps the bread to rise, but this is gluten free, so don't expect it to rise too much. So, you see, just let it not mix. This is the pan, so it is lined. 
so that the cross removal can see the texture so it doesn't stick to the pan so you line the pan this is, I use brown paper, you can use white paper whichever one you have available so the scoop it's as simple <laughs> as it is I'm going to avoid it with my hands. Just mix it down to the level. And it's ready to go into the oven. So our oven has been heated to 350 So this is our flourless chocolate bread, as I promised. So I've mixed it already. So this is flourless. There's no flour in it at all. So we made with cocoa powder water, eggs, and then a raisin agent. And then honey, of course, but if you want sweetener, you can use sweetener as well, in place of your honey. And then you can add some chocolate chips, chocolate chips. So you put the chocolate chips last, so that it stays, doesn't melt all the way to the bottom. Yeah, and that's it. Okay, so our cakes are ready. Our cake is ready since so chocolate has been cooled and I've got it from the pan. So this is the old flour cake bread. I put it for 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I'm going to put it on So you can eat it with eggs, whatever it is you feel like eating it with. It's great, a nice one. Very nice. To think that it's flourless, no flour in it. And this is healthy, right? Yes, healthy. No sugar? No sugar. So if you don't want to use onion, you can use sweet now, as I said. Or some people use dates, coconut sugar, whatever it is you want to use. How much will it cost to do something like this for me? But this is the biggest size of it. Mm. Uh, if you want it higher, or if you just want this one, it's about 5000 Alright, it's a wrap on today's episode, and I hope you did enjoy every bit of it. Stick around with us same time next week when we'll bring you a brand new episode, of course, with an exciting guest. If you did miss this week's episode, you can catch a repeat broadcast on our YouTube channel at iBrand TV. Also, don't forget to follow us on all our socials, of course, at iBrand TV. Till I come your way next time, my name is Joshua Okata. Bye for now.